Hi, in this episode I'm going to show you how to add a core to your portal maps using Hammer. I'm also going to be showing you the different methods of attaching a core to a rail, how to turn on the core's flashlight, and a few other things. There will be timestamps on screen for each of the different topics if you want to skip to a specific one. So now you want to create a new entity and call it NPC Personality Core. If you want it to be weekly, you need to call it at Sphere. There are different names for each of the different cores, I'll display them on the screen for you now. To change the skin, you can go to the bottom and change the Alt Model Skin property to whatever skin you want. If you want to use a skin that isn't Wheatley, make sure Use Alternate Skin is ticked as Yes. If you want to use Clean Wheatley, leave it as No and set Alt Model Skin to any of the options that isn't Blue Eye slash Broken. After you've got your core set up, next you want to make a small brush entity. I'm making a 16x16x16 16 by 16 by 16 invisible brush. Hit Ctrl T to turn it into a brush entity and then turn it into a Funk Tank. We're going to use these funk tanks in order to get the core to turn to look at the player. Here I'll be making two funk tanks, although I believe you can do this with one, but for purposes later on we're going to need two anyway. This tank is going to control the pitch, so we want to set the yaw rate and the yaw range both to zero. Pitch is rotation on the Y axis, that essentially means looking up and looking down. The pitch rate is the speed at which it rotates, I'm going to set mine as 60 for now. And pitch range is the distance that's able to rotate. I'm going to set mine as 180 to prevent it doing a full roll. To give your tank a distinct name, I'm calling mine Sphere Tank Pitch. After that, you shift drag to duplicate it and then place the copy back inside the original. And I'm going to rename this one Sphere Tank Yaw. This one will control the yaw rotation, which essentially refers to looking left and right. I'm going to set my yaw rate to be 120 and my yaw range to be 360 so that's able to rotate the full way around. Pitch rate and pitch range we can both set to zero. And make sure non solid is checked in the flags for both of these. Parent the tank pitch to the tank yaw, and then parent the sphere to the tank pitch. Now you can place the sphere on top of the funk tanks so that the funk tanks are directly in the middle of the sphere. Before the core is able to look at us, we need to activate the funk tanks. You do this through sending in an input. I'm going to be sending mine from a logic auto. On both the tanks, you send it the input activate, and then 0.01 seconds later, you send it a set target entity with a parameter of explanation mark player. And make sure that the core is rotated 270 degrees on the yaw, which is the z-axis. Otherwise, they won't rotate correctly in-game. If you load it up, you'll see in-game the core now does turn to look at you. But now we need to add a rail for them to go on. First, we're going to create a new brush for the core. This one I'm going to make a slightly different size so I can tell that it's different from the funk tanks. Once again, we want to place it right in the middle of the core. Next, hit Ctrl T to turn it into a funk detail. Then I'm going to turn it into a funk track train. Now, you can use a tank train here, but I prefer to use track trains. Once again, I'll give it the distinct name of sphere track train. Then I'm going to change the speed to 200. Depending on what your purposes are, you might want it to go a bit faster or a bit slower, but 200 is a good starting point. Next, you want to add the sounds. You can find these just by searching rail. Select rail start as the starting sound. Rail stop as the stopping sound. And rail travel loop as the moving sound. I'm going to change the volume to be 6 because I do find these to be quite loud. Next I'm going to create a path track and I'm just going to call it Sphere Path. On top of the path track we want to create a rail. This will just be a prop static. You can find the rail model just by searching rail and searching for rail horizontal. These are your options here. There is another one called rail vertical for when you're travelling upwards, but for this example I'll only be using these ones. I'm just going to create a basic track which goes around in a loop. If you don't have any attachment for the sphere and the rail, 24 units is a good starting point for the distance between the path track and the rail. Next, use shift drag to duplicate the path track. You want to place these all along the path you want your sphere to go in. For the starting path, I'm going to tick teleport to this path track. Next, we select sphere path as the first stop target. To get the core to move, we need to send it an input of start forward. With the track train, you're able to send it the input move to path node. This will move the core to the specific path that you put in the parameter value. And to get the sphere to stop, I'm going to send it the input of stop. Make sure the tank yaw is parented to the track train. Load it up in game and you should see it's working. And remember, if you don't like the speeds that it's moving, you can change it. Next, to get the core to talk, we want to create a logic choreographed scene. I'm going to call mine sphere one. If you go to this website, portal2sounds.com, you can search for any line in the game and you'll be able to find its file name. We copy the piece from the URL just before the .mp3 and then we can put it into the sound browser in Hammer. You need to make sure the logic choreograph scene has been sent the input of start and then you can load it up in game and it should work. Do you understand what I'm saying at all? Does any of this make any sense? Just tell and me most lines will yes. already have Wheatley be animated for you. If you don't like Wheatley's idle sequence, you can change that. Using the logic auto, I'm going to send the input to that sphere set idle sequence. 
and to choose an animation we can look at the sequences available to us in the model area in the cause entity tab. Such what idle and you'll have this list presented to you. The difference between the damaged and the non-damaged versions is that the damaged ones for after Wheatley gets crushed by GLaDOS and starts sparking all the time, and the ones before that Wheatley doesn't spark. There's also variations for when Wheatley is in a plug, and there's also a few variations for the cause at the end of the game. I'm going to select the idle sequence Sphere Damaged Idle Concerned. Here's how it looks in game. Do you understand what I'm saying? At all? Does any of this make any sense? Just tell me, just say yes. If you want to turn on the core's flashlight, it's very simple. All you have to do is send the core the input of enable flashlight. Do keep in mind you're not allowed to enable this and a projector texture at the same time. Here's how it looks in game. Let there be light. That's uh God. Next I'm going to show you how to create a proper attachment between the core and the rail. The first one I'm going to show you is the ball and stick attachment, which is the one we see Wheatley use in Chapter 5. First, create a new prop dynamic. You can find these models by searching Management, select the Management Rail Ball model, and create another prop, and this time select the Management Rail Stick model. Move the model so that the stick is just above the ball. Move the funk tanks inside of the ball. Here I'm repairing to the core to the ball, which is completely unnecessary. It would work if you left it as tank pitch, but I'm just demonstrating that you can do this but you will have to parent the management ball to the tank pitch. Make sure the stick is parented to the track train, then you can align the sphere with the correct spot on the management ball. With the stick, it's best to have 32 units between the path track and the rails. Here's how it looks in game. If we get a portal gun, we can see behind it that it is working. One problem with this is when it turns corners, you can briefly see the stick clipping through. Unfortunately, I don't really have much of a solution for this. This won't be too easy to see unless you have a lot of corners like I do here. And in case you're wondering, well, what does Valve use in the main game? They don't have a solution for this. If you're looking, you can actually see the stick does clip a lot in Main Portal 2. Next, I'm going to show you how to create the arm attachment for the core. This is the attachment we see at the end of Chapter 1. Once again, create a prop dynamic and you can find the model by searching Wheatley. The models you're after are Wheatley underscore arm underscore main and Wheatley underscore arm underscore base. You're going to want to align the main with the base so that it fits in this slot right here. Don't worry about the fact the rotation looks wrong, it's all meant to look like that, don't worry. Move Wheatley so that he connects at the end of the arm as shown here. Here I'm moving the path track so that they're at the very bottom of the rail. This just makes it a bit easier for this scenario. Next you want to take the funk track train and you want to put it in the very top of the base. You want to place it inside of this wheel piece, align it so that it's just four units beneath the centre of the wheel piece then parent the base to the track train. In the track train, this time you want to allow for angle change, so make sure change angles is on near path tracks, and make sure fixed orientation is not checked. Put the tank you're at the connection point between the base and the arm model, like this, then parent the arm model to the tank you're, and parent the base to the track train. Then move the tank pitch, the connection point between the sphere and the arm model, like this, and make sure the core is parented to the tank pitch. In game, it should now be working. What if you want to take Wheatley off of his arm model and carry him around? Well, you can actually do that already, as by default you're able to pick him up. So to prevent that, on the logic auto we're going to send the input disable pickup, so you won't be able to directly pick him up from the management rail anymore. To make him detach from the rail, you want to send him the input of clear parent and also enable pickup. Here I'm also going to be disabling the funk tanks just so that the management rail freezes as it doesn't make much sense to be moving after he's dropped off the rail. I'm also adding an NV spark that triggers when he drops off. This is completely unnecessary, it's just a nice detail. It should all work now. Next I'm going to show you how to make a sphere plug socket like how you see at the end of chapter 1. So first create a new prop dynamic, then you can find the model by searching plug. Next, you're going to want to carve out a 64 by 64 hole in the wall. We can put the plug socket in this hole. I'm just going to make the walls around this just pure black. Give the plug model the default animation of open idle. Then you want to create a brush that covers the plug model. Then you want to make that brush two units thick. Turn it into a funk brush. Give both the plug model and the brush a distinct name. And parent the brush to the plug model. 
Make sure hold animation is checked as yes in the plug model. Using the logic auto targeting the plug brush, you want to use the input set parent attachment maintain offset with a parameter override of panel attach. And I'm going to create a logic relay for opening the panel. On triggering, targeting the plug model, it will set the animation to open. We want to create a trigger brush by the socket of the plug model. This is what the core will need to hit in order to be placed in the plug socket. Assuming you only want the plug to be used once, you want to use a trigger once. Here I make a trigger multiple, but I correct that later. Make sure NPCs is checked in the flags. Then create a new entity and call it a filter activator class. I'm giving it the distinct name of sphere filter. And then filter class name, you want it to be NPC underscore personality underscore core. Then in your trigger brush, in the filter name, you select the filter you just created. This will prevent any other object triggering the brush. Give your trigger a unique name and have it as start disabled. Back in the open logic relay with a delay of three seconds you want it to enable the trigger brush. You then create a new logic relay for the attaching sequence. And back in the trigger brush create a new output on start touch targeting that new logic relay you just made and it triggers it. I'm just taking a screenshot to show what the final attached logic relay should look like given that it is quite long and complicated. Targeting the core, it will disable pickup, then it plays attach, and then it sets the parent to the sphere plug, then it disables motion. 0 0.01 seconds later for the core, it sets the parent attachment to sphere attach, it sets the idle sequence to sphere plug idle happy. This is because we need to change the idle sequence to the plug variant now. And also to the plug model, we want to set the animation as attach. In the logic relay or whatever you want to use to deattach the core, you want to put these outputs. Firing immediately, you want to set the animation of the plug model to be detach. Then firing on the core, you want to play detach. Then 0.01 seconds later on the core, you want to set the idle sequence back to whatever it was before. 0.5 seconds later, you want to clear the parent of the core. And then 0.51 seconds later, you want to enable pickup and then enable motion. Then finally 1.5 seconds later, you set the animation of the plug model to close. To make it impossible for a player to get stuck inside the plug model, I'm going to put an invisible brush covering it. And finally, to trigger the plug opening logic relay, I'm going to fire it via the core by using the on player pickup output. Make sure if you're doing this method, the logic relay is set to only trigger once though. Load it up and it should all work. Oh yes! Well done. Oh, that felt really good. So now we're done with this video. I hope this helps and if you have any questions you can leave them in the comments. Anyway, see ya. Do you understand what I'm saying at all? Does any of this make any sense? Just tell me, just say yes.